Hey there, Jim Johnson for Accent Help here, and I've had lots of questions about vowels and variations on vowels in different accents. So what I'm going to do is a multi-part series here where I'm going to talk about each one of the vowels that are very, very commonly used in a variety of English accents. So primarily a bit about native speaking accents, but then also ESL accents, English as a second language, or ELL accents, English learning uh, language learners, or English language learners, so that, so that you get a sense of what are the variations that tend to happen in many different accents with each one of these vowels. So for part one, I thought it would be useful for us to just start at the front and basically work our way down the front, and then we'll work our way down the back of it. So first I want to talk about the, the, the highest front one, the close front E sound, which is represented by a lowercase i. So J.C. Wells calls this the fleece vowel. Fleece. So with the fleece vowel, there don't tend to be significant variations. What you will get that moves away from this is that in some accents, you'll actually move towards the barred eye. So it's sort of moving towards the middle of the mouth. So it's making its way to a central position. And this would be E, now going back on the tongue, E, 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 E. So it's still got sort of shadows of an E sound, but it's moving further back in the mouth. With most English-speaking accents, this is going to stay pretty darn close to this. But on occasion, you get this, like with uh, Australia and New Zealand, for example. That's a very common one to have happen there. Um, with, uh, in England, for example, maybe the West Country accent has some creeping towards that as well. There are other accents where that happens. So this would become, instead of fleece, fleece, it becomes fleece. Flee, fleece, which in some ways almost feels like you're going schwa e fleece, only it's not making it all the way to fleece, fleece, fleece. It's not quite doing that. So this really doesn't necessarily accurately represent that. You could also just say that if we're going to get into diacritics, little tweaky marks, you could say that it's this one. Um, that's maybe moving back in the mouth, so it's moving towards that. So that's kind of in the land in between those two. That's like a little minus sign underneath it. Another way that you could indicate that, you could say that it's centralized. Or another way that you could explain it, if it's creeping more in this direction instead of straight back, is that you are going to mid-centralize it, which means you're kind of schwa-ifying it. So this would be fleece, fleece. 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 I think these are identical, really, because you're moving it central or you're retracting it. So those are, those are identical. Or fleece. Fle fleece. Fleece. Moving towards a schwa, which starts to get in the land of I, the kit vowel, which is the next one we will actually talk about. With this vowel, the nice thing with this one, there don't tend to be much for changes with it. And I do find in leading people through learning accents, I, I work with actors doing accents, in leading them through that, most of the time we don't even need to think of this shift because it happens because of the placement, the sense of where the sound lives in the mouth. So in some ways I've, given, I've let myself off the hook by starting with one of the simpler ones, but I think it sets up this idea of leading you through the various vowel symbols. So there you go. If you want more info on learning accents for actors, you can check out accenthelp.com.